What's up guys, Thirst Cousin here. Welcome back to another code review. And before any of you say anything, yes, I know my eye is red, my eye is swollen. Unfortunately, a fly flew into it the other day and it is what it is. But don't worry, even though I'm currently blind in this eye, I'm still going to review this code and I'm still going to make all of you senior developers. Let's go. All right, cool. So this is the app that we're going to be looking at today. It's called WordSage, and it's essentially a quizzing app that is designed to get you to learn new words and to better your vocabulary. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this app running locally because it is using React Native and I was having some issues when I was trying to run it locally, so we're going to have to do without, but I guess that's fine because we're only interested in the code anyways. This is what the code in the repository looks like. You have three main folders, admin panel, backend, and frontend. They're all pretty self-explanatory. And of course, as always, for our video, we're only going to be focusing on the frontend. So the frontend folder is a React Native application. It is built with Expo, and this is exactly what you would expect from an Expo app, right? And you have this SRC folder, which has all of the files for this current project. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that the folder structure here is really great. Everything for me is super easy to understand, and I can easily predict where everything is going to be. You have a folder for components, you have a folder for features, which is basically all of the features that this application has. We are going to look at this in just a moment. And then you have a folder for screens, which are all of these screens that this application has that a user can navigate to on the actual application. Now, the first file that I want to look at is inside of the screens folder and then level assessment, and it's the level assessment screen. This is a file that holds a quiz, which you can see here, we have the questions that are coming from Redux, which by the way, this application does use Redux as a state management solution. And then you have the rest of the file. So here we have a bunch of state variables for holding different states. We have some use effects here. We have some functions that handle going to the next question. And then we have some more use effects here. And then we have the actual UI that is being rendered on the screen. Now, as I was looking through this file, something here is clearly wrong. And it has to do with is quiz completed. If we look at here, is quiz completed and look at where it's used, it's first used here in this UI, which shows some UI if the quiz is not completed, otherwise it will show something else. And then it's used inside of this use effect here, which basically says that we have this use effect that listens to is quiz completed. And when is quiz completed becomes true, we are going to dispatch the assess level action. Now this is wrong. This is actually an anti pattern and you should not do this in react. You should not have a use effect that listens to a variable and then does something in response to that variable. In this case is quiz completed. Instead, what you want to do is wherever in your code, you change is quiz completed to true, you want to also fire this code there because it makes more sense to do it in the action instead of having a whole use effect that is actually unnecessary to do the same thing. So let's now look at where set is with completed is getting used. It's getting used here in this use effect, which basically looks at the remaining time, which comes from this use effect right here. And then it's going to set it to true. And then going further, it is getting used in this handle next question, right? So it's only getting used in two places. So what I would do is I would come here below this use effect. I'll just make some space and I would create here a new function. We're going to do const handle quiz complete. That's going to take nothing for now. And then we are going to dispatch this, we're going to take this code that we have here in this use effect, we're going to put it here. And because we need for the UI, right, we have this is quiz completed, we need to use it in the UI to display some things, we're still going to have to make use for it. So we're just going to do where is it, I'm going to copy this here, we're going to put it here. And we are going to set this here. Now we have a separate function that handles the quiz complete, which means that we can come here. And then we can just instead of set quiz complete, we can just do handle quiz complete. And then in this use effect as well, we can do the same thing handle quiz complete. And now the beauty of doing it this way is that we no longer need to have this use effect because this is redundant. This functionality is now handled in this function directly. So we can just come here and delete this entire use effect. And now we have one less dependency. Then moving on, there's also something else that I noticed that we could really improve here. And that is this piece of code here. If you look at what this piece of code does, we have an interval that is being set here, which basically decreases the time every second. Second, right? It's a countdown timer. It's going to decrease the seconds by one every single second. And then we have this use effect here that listens to that time. And whenever the timer reaches zero, it'll run a specific action. This is a perfect candidate for a custom hook. You could put all of this in a hook called use countdown, make it reusable, and then get the same functionality in one line of code. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to come here and create a new folder because this repository doesn't have a hooks folder, which I think that every project should have. So we're going to do hooks. And then inside of hooks, we're going to create our new hook. It's going to be use count down dot JS because we are working in JavaScript. And now we're going to do export const use 
countdown and hopefully I'm gonna let Copilot do all the work. Hopefully it's going to work. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Actually, I don't want this code. What I wanna do is I wanna take this entire code that you've put here, put it here, because essentially we're going to be creating the same thing. And now the only thing that we need is this remaining time state variable because we don't have it there. So we're gonna come here, copy this, put it here, and we're gonna put it here at the top of our component. Then we're gonna to wanna to make some improvements to this hook to make it really reusable across any component. So for example, this 600 here should not be hard coded directly. It should instead come from the person that's calling this hook. So we're gonna come here and do time and then come here at the bottom and replace this with time and also get rid of this comment because it's no longer going to be just 10 minutes. Then at the bottom here, what we wanna do is return remaining time so that the caller can always access this remaining time in case you want to use it in the component. And then because we have this use effect here, we which basically runs something when the remaining time is finished, what we can do is also add an optional on complete callback function, which instead of handle quiz complete, we're gonna do on complete. And also this is going to be optional, so it's not always going to be there. So what we can do here is and end on complete. And now this code is going to run if the remaining time is equal to zero and if we have provided an on complete callback. Then if you go back to the code, what we can do is completely get rid of this entire code. So I'm just gonna do this and then I wanna do const remaining time equals use count down 600 we can even do here 10 minutes as we had it before and then all we need to do is get rid of this state variable here because it's now going to be enclosed in the actual hook and now our component is much smaller we created a custom hook that is reusable across all of our components and this makes this component easier to read and we've extracted this functionality to be reusable across our app Cool, that was great. Let's move on. Let's look at a different screen. This one is going to be in the learn folder inside of screens folder still, and it's going to be the lesson details screen. So this is a screen that as the name implies, obviously it's going to show you the details of a specific lesson. It gets the lesson through its parameters here, as you can see here, it has a bunch of stuff here for Redux, has some state variables, some use effects again, and then some functions that will handle the navigation, how to start lesson and so on. And then it will actually render the UI for the actual component. One thing that I've noticed here, this is something that I haven't seen in multiple projects, but I do this all the time in my own projects, is the use of custom render functions like this render buttons here or this render lesson status text, which just render some UI, it has no state, they're not separate components, they're essentially helper functions inside of this component to make things a little bit easier to actually work with. If you look here, for example, at render lesson status text, you have a bunch of UI that is rendered based off the status of the current lesson. Doing this directly in the return function here at the bottom would be cumbersome because you would have to use ternary operations to do all of this. I personally find it a little bit easier as a code organization thing to put this in a separate function so that you can use plain JavaScript to have your if conditions and then render your UI. This for me looks a little bit cleaner than doing it directly in the return function. This will not impact performance in any way. Trust me on this, you don't need to wrap this and use callback. You don't need to worry about extra renders or things being recreated. This is the same as putting all of this code directly in this return function with the only difference that you're organizing your code differently in a separate function, right? You're using this function here, which essentially is equivalent. You don't have to worry about any performance trust me on this i know some of you are going to complain about this but i know what i'm talking about you don't need to use callback or worry anything else this is perfectly valid code now here's a really big problem with this component i want you to look at these two state variables here you have is continue pressed and is start pressed just like we talked about in the previous file this should scream red flags we have a piece of state for is continue pressed and is start pressed which indicates that we're tracking state for some action that was done either continue was pressed or start was pressed let's now look at where is continue pressed is being used if i go here to look at the other occurrences we only have it used in this use effect here which is the same pattern as we had in the previous file right we have a use effect here that listens to is continue pressed also listens to is start pressed right and then if either of those are true it is going to run this piece of code we have another effect that listens to piece of state that does some code when actually we should have put this code where these variables are actually getting changed if i now go and look at where set is continue pressed is being used it's only being used in one place 
place in this handle navigation function. And then if I look at set is start pressed, it's also getting used only in this one function. And these functions kind of go together. We have a function here that handles the navigation. And then based off the status of the lesson, if it's in progress or completed, it's going to set is continued to true. Otherwise, if it's not started, it's going to handle the start lesson function. So already there's a couple of things that we can change here to make some improvements. For example, this handle start lesson function is only ever getting used here. So it's not even actually worth it to make a whole separate function out of this. So what I can do is just take this code, cut it from here, and then just paste it here at the bottom, maybe reformat this. And then this is going to complain that we can't use a wait. So we just have to do async here. And that's it. And now I can just get rid of this. Actually, first, we need to change lesson dot underscore ID, get rid of this, and then we get rid of this function directly. And now we have eliminated one unnecessary function. But then if we really look at this handle navigation function and look at it properly, you have to pay attention for this and look at what it's actually doing. We have lesson dot status equals 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 in progress or completed, it's going to set is continued press to true. Otherwise, if it's not started, it's going to set is start press to true. Now, if you go back to our use effect here that actually listens to is continue press and is start pressed, this will run this piece of code here if either of those are actually triggered to true. So what we can actually do is we can just cut this code right here, come back here, and actually we can put this even at the bottom of this function because there's no other status that the lesson can be in. It can either be in progress, completed, or not started. So regardless of this, this code will have to run. Right. So actually, do we really need to have is continued press? Do we really need to have a start press? We actually don't. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this here. We can then beautifully get rid of this use effect here completely because we don't need it. And then even better, you see now is continue press is not used, is start press is not used. We can get rid of these two state variables directly. And this is what I meant when I said that you should really be careful with use effect and always ask yourself, do I really need this or can I achieve the same functionality without? And now if you even look at our handle navigation function, we have this empty if check, which actually is not needed. We can just remove it completely. And now we're only going to run some code if the lesson.status is not started. We're going to await the dispatch of the start lesson. And then we're going to continue with this code regardless, which basically just replaces the navigation or dispatches the get words action. We've successfully removed two unnecessary state variables and one unnecessary use effect. And that is a win. And then if we scroll down here a little bit at the bottom, we have another use effect that has the same pattern, right? This time with is take quiz pressed. I'm not going to do it in this video because I feel it's going to get a little bit too long and I feel that you already got what I was trying to do. But essentially what I would do is I would try to get rid of this use effect completely and put all of this code, the simple navigation code, or even this code, wherever this is take quiz press is getting set to true. Cool. Otherwise, the rest of the application is pretty solid. I really like what I'm seeing. Everything is well organized and it's easy to read and to work with. For example, we didn't look at these features here, but if I go into auth, for example, we have this auth slice, which is all from Redux. We have this initial state. We have this create slice here with all of these reducers. I'm not going to go too much into depth about this because this is not a Redux video, but generally this entire application is really well organized. You have also here the associated functions with this piece of state, right? This auth piece of state. And generally, it's good to have things organized. It's good to have patterns in your code so that it's easy to predict, easy to work with. And for any new developer that looks at the code, even me when I'm reviewing this code, it makes everything just really easy when you have established patterns in your project. And in my opinion, it is the correct way to build a scalable React application. So there you go, guys. That was another code review down in the books. If you've enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to subscribe. You can click here to subscribe. It will really help me out a lot. If you also want to look at a different video, I'm sure this one is super, super awesome. And with that being said, if you want your code to be reviewed, once again, you can join the Discord, you can submit it in code reviews, and I will gladly look at it in exchange for a video. It's a win-win for everybody. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.